Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Four Type Make You Loco channel. So today we're going to show you how to fix a real common issue with the Ford F-150, mainly the 2009 through 2014 models where you have a slip bump condition within the drivetrain. So what you're going to feel is going down the road, let's say you're at a stop sign, and you go to take off from that stop sign, you're going to feel a bump, like almost like someone tapped you from behind. What was that? And then you're going, you're driving down the road, you're, the transit is shifting fine, everything's great. Then you come down to a stop sign to stop at it, you're completely stopped, and all of a sudden, boom. You feel another bump behind you, like, what's going on here? Well, what's happening is the drive shaft, as it loads and unloads, and it changes angles, it's actually binding and sticking, and then, of course, popping. So this is common, especially with the two-piece drive shaft, like you see here, but it can also happen to the one-piece drive shaft. Now, I actually have a video on how to lubricate this and what the concern is, but that video is like seven years old, and I only showed how to lubricate and fix the one-piece drive shaft. Like I said, it's way more common on the two-piece drive shaft because of the angles involved here. And there's actually a repair kit out that we're going to be installing today, which is basically a clamp and some special Teflon grease that will fix the slip joint right here. What's happening is the slip joint is getting dry. A lot of times they don't have enough grease in there, the wrong kind of grease, and the splines are actually binding on each other. And until the vehicle suspension settles or takes off and actually loads up, that's when it pops and you get that sensation in the drive line. So luckily, it's a really easy, really cheap fix. I'll link to all the parts and everything you need down below. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, safety. You must realize that during this procedure, we're going to be removing the rear portion of the drive shaft. And between the drive shaft and the parking pole, it's the only thing that's holding the vehicle from rolling away while you're underneath it. So the first thing we need to do is use a chalk block like that right there. We're going to stick it in here at the front of the wheel so it does not roll forward. And then we're going to come back here to the rear axle and get that ready. What you're gonna do is you're gonna jack it up right here at the meaty portion of the differential. You're gonna jack up with a floor jack, and then you're gonna set it down on some uh, jack stands right here and here next to the leaf spring mounts, all right? Set it down on there, and that'll kind of hold the truck from rolling plus the chalk blocks in the front. At that point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up here and get our trim tool, okay? And we're going to come to the side of the transmission, the driver's side. You're going to see your shift linkage coming forward, okay? You can also put it in neutral at this point if you want. Uh, but I'm underneath here, right? And the vehicle's up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop it off of there. Get it in there far enough. And pop it. Oh, like that. And then right now we are in park, of course. So it's reverse and neutral. All right, and what that's gonna do is allow us to um, spin the drive shaft so we can get each bolt down to the bottom here. All right, so we'll be able to spin it and get to each bolt so you can zing them off of there. All right, let's get down to the repair. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this clamp right here. The new one does come in the kit. So what we're gonna do is remove the clamp, get it out of the way, and this whole thing will just slide back on there. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna use, get you zoomed in a little bit there so you can see what's going on. There we go. What I use is a long straight screwdriver like this. I'll stick it right into here, okay? And you can kind of work it around in there and kind of pop it loose. Um, sometimes they do take a little tap of the hammer. Watch the boot though to get it in there a little bit further. And then you can kind of pop them around there and just bend this back and it'll pop. They're not too bad, just watch the boot. So at that point, on you know, this thin piece of metal, just bend it, get it out of the way. Now inside this boot is where that slip joint is at, and of course, all our grease and everything, okay? So this is ready to disconnect uh, boot and rear drive shaft and all from the front here. Before we do that though, you must mark this shaft in relation to this shaft. It is a balanced unit, okay? So the easiest way to do that um, is you wanna mark it only once, and you wanna mark it, you know, quite a bit. One location only, but quite a bit in case it gets, you know, washed off. So I'm marking it all the way back here, okay? And then all the way down here. 
just in case it gets washed off right here. And this will make sure we spline the two halves back together in the original orientation so that it's balanced still. Okay? So we're good there, marked. The clamp is off. And this thing, you know, just kind of pulls off of there. We're ready to go. Now, what we can do is go down here and unbolt the drive shaft from the pinion flange. All right, now moving on to the business end down here of the drive shaft. You want to make sure that, of course, the vehicle is jacked up, we're chock blocked, and we're safe. At this point, the vehicle's in neutral. We can spin, 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 and get to each one of these bolts dead on, straight on, okay? Before you start pulling bolts out, again, this drive shaft is made it to this pinion flange. It has a rust buildup to it. So in, in order to avoid a stack up of rust on there and an actual runout issue, you simply, again, just mark it. The relation, done. And then at that point, we can go ahead and take our 12.12 millimeter socket, an extension, and our half inch impact. We can go ahead and loosen them. All right, so now once all the bolts are removed from the, the pinion flange here, you wanna make sure you hold the drive shaft. You don't want it coming out and busting you in the face, all right? Right now there's a rust bond, we're at the brake, but otherwise it's loose. So over here, I already popped loose on this side, already marked, we're good to go. We need to tap this off and break that bond though. So the best way to do that is to tap on the yoke on the pinion flange side, not the drive shaft one right here, but the one on the dry shaft, or the pinion side. I'll show you how that looks. So you can see the one that actually touches the pinion flange. You want to tap, tap, tap with a three pound sledge, something like this, while you're holding the dry shaft. And I'll show you how that looks. Let me pull you back so you can see it all happen. All right, so you gotta take it down from here. All right, so very simple. You're going to tap, tap, tap while holding it, and then we're going to slide it out. Just like that. And then we're going to take it, boot and all, and we're going to slide it out. And that's the part we need to grease right there. All right, now that we have it down, here comes the goopy part. All right, so we're gonna get the old grease off of here. We're gonna use some rags and really get in those grooves in there. We're gonna pull back the boot and get the rest of it out of there. And then of course, we need to do the same thing on this side. You'll notice a lot of times it gets dry. Uh, these, this grease went through a couple of different versions. There's a blue one, a green one, and now they settled on this Teflon white one. So this one's not so bad, which is good. Most of the grease is over here. Get all the way inside of there with your rag and really get it out of there, all right? So you wanna get all the old grease out, then we're gonna apply the new white grease and get this thing fixed up. It's like a five minute ordeal to fix one of these, it's great. So let's go ahead and get the old grease out and I'll show you how to slather on the new grease. Okay, so once you're done, you should have, you know, 90% of the grease gone so you can start applying the new stuff. You can see inside this side of it, it's pretty darn clean. It was like that from the beginning. And this side, we had to clean all that grease out of the grooves and inside the boot on here. What I had to do is use compressed air and kind of blow it out of there and do a really good wiping on there. I do not recommend using brake clean to clean it off of there. Usually does not get off grease that well anyway. Um, and also there is a coating on this side of the shaft. If you look at it closely, you can see there's like a coating on the steel. You don't want to ruin that coating because that does help with the slip bump issue also besides the grease. All right. So let's go ahead and put you up here and I'll show you how to disperse the grease. Basically what you need to do is give, you know, I would say 80% of it on this side of it. 
and the other 20% up top side there. So this little grease packet they give you is the exact correct amount of grease for this shaft, all right? So again, you just kind of want to spread it around on there and keep spinning the shaft and then we'll of course smear it around on there. You want to try to get it all worked into the splines on here and not inside the boot, all right? It's like freaking a frosting packet or something. Much more goopier though. Yeah, so you'll be able to tell when it's fully saturated on the spline side here. And then I'll put the rest of this up inside the other side of the, the joint. But basically what you want to do is, we have it on there now. What you want to do is just spread it evenly in these grooves on here. And just keep moving it around. You can leave some excess on there, of course. And this stuff is a really good fix for it. Had really good luck with this fix, this Teflon grease. So it's worth it. And the kit's like, I don't know, $20 or so. And I'll link to the, the latest and greatest kit from Ford and all that stuff. Which uh, has been out for many years now. Uh, so they're obviously happy with this latest grease. So something like that. So it's pretty nice and even. And we're good to go. And then I'll put the rest in the top side there. All right, now going back together, we put the remaining uh, grease packet inside of here, cleaned up really well, and made sure there's no grease in the outside where the boot and clamp goes on there. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have the clamp, the new clamp that comes in the kit, on the shaft. You cannot put it on the boot side. It will not slip over very easily, okay? So you do something like that, and you see how it kinda cocked itself and holds? It should hopefully hold the whole time we're putting it back up in there. Now what's important here is that we line up our marks on here. So you gotta pay attention to that. Besides that, you're gonna slide it in slowly, let the air come out, and then we're gonna get it close enough, and then we're gonna concentrate back here, and we're gonna get one of the drive shaft bolts screwed in by hand so it holds it up, and then we can concentrate in the clamp and everything over here. So have a bolt ready to go. I'll get back here. Sure. All right. So this rear portion of the drive shaft is not that heavy. It's not that bad. Find your mark. Hopefully my head's not in the way. And like I said, there's gonna be a lot of grease right here popping out. Okay, yeah, just go slowly. Ugh, whoa. All right, looks like we're lined up. Great, who cares? Let's come over here. We'll line up our marks our mark on the pinion flange side and then we'll get a bolt in here. One bolt for now is good. Make sure it's in there though. Put in there a couple. I'll even screw it in a little bit. Just like that so we know it's like gonna fall on our head. And then we can come back over here and check our work. So like I said, it's gonna spooge out of there Quite a bit. Nothing is permanent now, as of right now. You know, the clamp's not set, the bolts aren't set, nothing's set, so we're good to go. We have an opportunity here to check our markings. So you can see right here, all the way along, we are good to go. I like to pull this back just a little bit like that, get the grease off of here, just so it doesn't leak out of there and kind of spin around, shoot out there. It'll pop back over naturally in its groove. Everything's lined up, we are good to go. We can go ahead and put this back over, just like this. Just like that. And it just kind of work it over, just like that. All right, good to go. Then you can either use a large, uh, diagonal cutters like this, or you can use the proper ones that actually will crimp this clamp, all right? So I'll show you how it goes once I get it started on here. I'll bring it in and I'll show you. Uh, but basically you can do it anywhere on here, okay? And you're just gonna crimp that section 
that we pried on before to open it up and pop the old clamp, all right? So I had it started. It's starting to crimp and collapse. We're centered in the groove here. We're still good to go. I'm happy, I'm happy. And then we're just gonna go a little bit more. And it's gonna be a little difficult if you have uh, just diagonal cutters, but I, I, I did it for years. I did it for many, many, many years uh, before getting an actual set of clamp pliers like this. So, all right. I'll bring it in to show you exactly how it should look and then uh, how to tighten down the drive shaft back there so it's safe and secure. Here's a close-up of that clamp I just installed. So again, you want to verify one more time that your, your alignment marks are good to go, nice and straight. Make sure the clamp is centered in the boot there. And then you find a little box a nub that sticks out there and we simply get our dikes or our crimping pliers on there and we're gonna get it on there on each side like that and squeeze enough so that deforms, just like that. See how it deforms just like the factory one? At that point, wipe off any excess grease and you're good to go on this end. Then we'll come down here to the business end. What you wanna do is use blue medium strength thread locker, put a little dab on each one of the bolts, thread all the bolts in by hand, a couple of threads so we're not cross-threading. Make sure you put Loctite on the bolt that's holding it up right now. Where's it at? Right there. And of course, make sure that your um, alignment marks are lined up on here. Also, at that point, you can go ahead and tighten down the four pinion bolts to 76 foot-pounds, nice and secure. You want to do it all at once, crisscross pattern on there. Do it before you forget. It's a very important safety item. Make sure this is good to go. At this point, everything is back together on the drive shaft side of things. So let's go ahead and put our vehicle back in the park. All right. You can either do it up top side with Buddy or down below like this. Reverse, park. This seat's all the way back in park. And then you simply line it up on there, get it lined up and then put some good force into it, squeeze them together, and it will pop and it'll lock back in, all right? At that point, everything's back together, we're back in parks, we're safe. We can go ahead and jack the vehicle back up, get it off the ground, off the jack stands, and let it back down. Get the chalk block out of there, jack stands out of there, and go for a drive and test it out. Do multiple, you know, stop and go uh, traffic and test it out. Should be good to go for a long time, this is a good fix and it makes the truck feel like brand new, especially if you've been dealing with this slip joint problem for a while. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.